Climate change is the major existential challenge humanity faces. If we don't fix it, our grandkids will freeze or fry. The destructiveness of extreme weather is increasing dramatically, and resources for life, particularly water, food, and the air we breathe are threatened more and more. Fiercer hurricanes, longer droughts, accelerating sea level rises, and massive storm surges threaten civilization as we know it. And with it, starvation, poverty, migration, and conflict. The world established a response path in 2015 in the Paris Accords and SDG 13 with a measured, nationally based, but globally coordinated structure focused on a worldwide 2050 carbon reduction target. Over time, this will be adapted to respond to the scientifically measured changing impacts of climate and weather patterns the related SDG impacts, and the shifting geopolitical buy-in. Travel and tourism as a lead global development agent has to step up to the plate with actions, the more so as many of our core products are in the front line, transport, particularly aviation, coastal facilities, infrastructure, for example, will need radical transformation and support. We are not going far enough fast enough. We need to be in the mainstream of change. Renewable energy focused, socially inclusive, resource efficient, cloud connected and biodiversity conserving. It also means building this transformation into our education systems from school through university. We can set the path, but it's the next generation that will have to tread it. Business as usual is not enough. Moderate change is not enough. Only total transformation is enough. SunX, the strong universal network, has been established to make this happen and is building global partnerships under SDG 17 to create this change. Please join us at www.thesunprogram.com. Murray Strong came from a humble background in Oak Lake, Manitoba. His lack of formal education and his having to make his own way brought him in contact with the Inuit people and with organizations such as the YMCA. By the strength of his extraordinary personality, he single-handedly mobilized people and institutions to bring the environment to the forefront of the international conversation. I must say I feel more at home here tonight than I have uh, since I arrived in Stockholm. This, no, this, this conference is a 10-day conference of governments. And governments are moved to do what people want them to do and, in effect, what people force them to do. And governments will do about as much about these problems as they feel that people like you are going to require them to do. At the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment in Stockholm 1972, he made his vision clear. I believe that if we're going to succeed in this task of better managing our own activities on this planet, we have to do on a much larger scale what we started to do in Stockholm, and that is involve citizens, involve scientists, involve people in their private roles in the whole process by which society decides in which direction it has to move. The conference brought together NGOs and governments in a bold and revolutionary move. It was, in fact, the first attempt at formalizing the international environmental movement. The United Nations organization has learned a lot from this experience. And one of the things we've learned is that we need new and better techniques of relating ourselves to the citizens groups and the non-governmental organizations. And I think this conference will show us 
better how to do that kind of a job, and I hope that you will continue after Stockholm the activity that you've started here. Because if we stop here, if we let government stop here, if we let international organizations stop here, if we let people stop here, it won't be long before some of the worst predictions that we've been hearing may well be upon us. The Stockholm Declaration broke new ground and created bold and revolutionary initiatives. My own minimum expectation for the Declaration is that it include uh, uh, the acceptance of responsibility on the part of nations for the consequences of their actions on the environment of others. Out of Stockholm came the United Nations Environment Program. Maurice agreed to set it up. Man has sobered up somewhat, and the environment issue has made him realize that he does have to make very hard choices. He hasn't got it made. He can't have it all, always. He's got to decide, and in deciding, it's those the deeper sense of values which is finally going to determine what he decides. Twenty years later, in 1992, more than a hundred heads of state gathered for the Earth Summit in Rio. Once again, under the leadership of Maurice Strong. It was not as much optimism as excitement and expectation and hope. Hope that this world conference, which attracted more world leaders than it had ever assembled before, uh, would in fact be able to move us off the dime, onto a pathway to a more sustainable future, to help make a fundamental change of course in industrial civilization. Maurice Strong had a way with words. His sentences were profound. They were poetry. His words inspiring others to follow in his path. The environment crisis, perhaps most of all, makes it clear that man can no longer avoid the necessity of choice. Because the choices we make are really going to determine the future course of human evolution on this planet. And while nobody can put a, a date by which we will have reached the point of no return, it seems very clear to me from all the evidence I've seen from the scientific world that the choices we make in this generation will really determine whether we make it or not. We've got the basis for, the change, for change now, but we've got to push like hell to make sure it takes place. <laughs>